In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify transistors using a multimeter. So to do this, the first thing you want to do is turn your multimeter on diode check. So it should be set, for on this particular meter, it's set here to the symbol that looks like a diode. Uh, the other symbol there just means that it makes sound when there's continuity measured. So if I take the leads, for instance, and I put them together, I get a sound. And notice I get a reading, in this case 0.001 when I put the leads together and when the leads are apart I get one on this particular meter. It's really just showing me that there's no continuity at all. And what I'm going to do to make this a little easier for me during this video is just put some leads on here to lengthen these, some alligator clip leads. And this is just going to help me handle everything here during the video. There's two things we're trying to identify. The type of transistor, whether it's an NPN or a PNP, and the terminals on the transistor, whether it's the emitter, the base, or the collector. And for every bipolar junction transistor, there is a base lead that's common to both the emitter and the collector. One particular type of material for a PNP transistor, for instance, there's the base will be the n-type material, and it will be common to both the emitter and the collector. So to start off with, let's just go ahead and hook this up and it doesn't matter where you start. Let's, let's just hook the middle lead up to the positive lead of the meter and the negative lead of the meter to the first terminal. Okay, if we notice the meter, we don't see any continuity. It's still reading a 1 down there. All right, so let's move the negative lead to the other side. And we still notice we have a 1. Now that's a strong indication that the center lead needs to be negative. In fact, there's no other choice. So let's make the center lead negative and see what happens when we hook it up now. Now if we hook up the right lead to positive, we get some continuity. That's a sign that the right lead is p-type material and the middle lead is n-type material. Let's hook the red lead to the other side, and we still get continuity there. So that tells us right away that the center lead is n-type material, and the lead on the left and the lead on the right are both p-type material. So this is a PNP transistor. Now to identify the particular terminal, whether it's the emitter or collector, we know the center terminal here is the base, because the base is n-type material. It's common to both the emitter and collector which also are made of the same type of material. So the middle must be the base since we don't have to change it and we get continuity in both cases, whether we're on the left side or the right side. But if we notice carefully, the reading we're getting right now is 0.653 if I have the lead on the right and we're getting 0.669 if I have the lead on the left. So 0.669 versus 0.653 means that the lower reading is going to be the reading for the collector, which is on the right side of the transistor, and the higher reading is going to be the emitter, which is on the left side of the transistor. So this is a PNP transistor with the left lead being the emitter, the middle lead being the base, and the right lead being the collector. So we've identified this transistor and we've identified the the type and the leads. Now let's try this other one. I've got another one here. I'm going to hook it up and let's assume that the center is going to be hooked to negative and the right lead is going to be hooked to positive. And I notice there's no change in my meter. So that means this is reverse biased or <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean it's reverse biased. It could mean that these two leads are the emitter and collector and they cannot show conductivity between the two leads without the base having some say-so in that continuity. So right now we've either got these leads reversed or we're reading the emitter and collector. Alright, so let's go hook this to the other side and see what we get. If I hook this up here, I still get no continuity. So that's a strong indication that the center lead needs to be positive. So let's go ahead and change it to positive, and if I do that, I get continuity on the meter. 
So, so far this is telling me that the center lead is P-type material and the right lead is N-type material. Let's move the lead, the black lead, over to the other side. And if I do that, I get continuity again. So that tells me that the center lead is the base because I have continuity on either side of that terminal when the negative terminal is hooked to the left or the right side. The center lead is the base and this is an NPN transistor because when this side is negative it conducts and when the other side is negative it conducts. So one of those is the emitter and the other one's the collector. How do we tell which one is which? Well if we look at the reading here we have 0.631 and on the other side, we have 0.644. So the lower reading is the collector, and that reading was on the right side. So this is an NPN transistor with a pinout of E, B, C. So we just identified two small signal transistors using this method. What about uh, a power transistor? Here's a couple of power transistors. This was removed from a switching power supply. Let's go ahead and hook this up. And one thing I can tell you is that the center lead for most power transistors like this is hooked to the case. As you can see, we have continuity between the center lead and the case. And that's always the collector. So that's one thing we know going in for this particular type of transistor, that the center lead is the collector. But even if we didn't know that, we could still figure out it's the collector. Because if I hook up my lead here, uh, let's assume that this lead has to be positive and this lead has to be negative. Well, if we do that, we get continuity on the meter. So, so far, that's telling us that the lead on the right has to be positive and the lead in the middle has to be negative for continuity. Now, let's move the lead to the other terminal, the negative lead. And if we do that, we see continuity again. So this immediately tells us that the first lead must be the base because it's common to both these two terminals. And these two terminals have to be negative. They're made of n-type material, and they have to be negative to conduct, and they do. So this transistor must be an NPN transistor because the first terminal is the base, it's positive, and these other two terminals are conducting because they're on N-type material. Now we already know the center terminal is the collector for this particular type of power transistor case. But let's check and see if that's true. If I have it here, I have 460, and if I have it here, I have 546. The terminal with the lower resistance is the collector, that's the center terminal. So the pinout for this transistor is base, collector, emitter, and it's an NPN transistor.